Okay, this is about uh, forklift batteries. Um, I know this is a reasonably old technology and that lithium cells, etc., and whatever is going to be developed, are probably more efficient and user friendly. However, there is a huge cost implication and also there's a recycling implication. If you can reuse forklift batteries, that's flooded lead acid batteries, uh, and your wind and solar system, you can get another 20 years life out of them. So there's two things there. So reuse rather than recycle. And the other one is the huge cost implication. So this video really is about this pack of batteries here that I've just brought back and I'm going to do the tests on it. The initial thing in the yard before I started was anything below 1.8 volts, forget it. Uh, I mean that is quite a luxury in some ways of discarding those ones but you've got to start somewhere. So these ones in this pack here were showing 1.9 or 2 volts per cell. So that is a good start. Uh, and I know they've been sat on charge for quite a while. So we're selecting out the ones that are showing, say, 1.2 volts or 1.4 volts or 0.5 of a volt. Those are obviously a bit of a problem with them or they're self-discharging, that sort of thing. So don't mess with those. So the next thing is physical condition. And it's normally what the plates look inside and also what the terminals look like. So there's a battery down here we're just going to look at terminal problems. So as you can see it's a reasonably large cell. It's about 20 centimeters which is 8 inches by 6 centimeters which is about an inch and a quarter by 700 high which is about 2 foot 4 inches quite chunky weighs about 25 kilos um, you can move them around not too bad so therefore it is possible to move each cell uh, reasonably easily so let's have a look at the terminals so that's the negative one and it all looks not too bad And the bolt threads in all right so let's have a look at the positive oh dear as you can see there's corrosion there and the lead has disappeared around the brass insert and the brass insert has started to uh, corrode away and with the links you've got Acids got in there, come up through the terminal in something like that, and it's got into the joint, and this will just keep corroding. It's also destroyed the seal. See that side, it's good. This terminal here, there's some corrosion in there, and somehow there's a couple of little holes in there and acids got in there and that will only get worse so links like this really discard if you have the luxury or cut out this piece and clean it all out and then seal it again somehow and the bolts this is quite a good one but you can get corrosion in here the uh, the plastic uh, breaks off all sorts of things. You know, sometimes you'll get a perfectly good pack of batteries and it's the terminals that are given the problem and if you recharge the batteries with proper links and pay attention to the low cells 
you'll end up with quite a good battery pack that will work very well in a wind and solar system obviously it won't give full capacity for running a fork truck but wind and solar there are different demands you know, you're not having to run motors big power motors and lift two ton on hydraulics and stuff like that so for a quick volt test this is the positive, that's the negative, because it's got positive there. I've got this on DC volts, and I've actually got on 20. And this one shows 1.89, which is fine. The cell's probably quite alright. Or it has a good chance of being alright. But that terminal's a problem. I think this seal is probably letting acid up through it. And it may be that it's been overfilled quite a few times. And so therefore the acid has been forced up through there. A bit of um, bicarbonate of soda and water as a sort of thin paste put round there may very well help this if you had to use this one. But try and avoid it if you have that luxury. whilst we're dealing with terminals when you get these packs if they've got the links still on them they'll probably be they're probably there a long time so they'll probably be very tight so you need a full hex socket not a bi hex only a hex so you've got six corners and it needs to fit really well if you use a bi-hex you'll end up breaking the corners of this plastic off. A full proper hex. And don't go belting it, give it gentle pressure to undo them. Sometimes they're incredibly tight and if you could see here, see where you had a bit of corrosion on there? And this because this one hasn't been put together properly. You need to use Vaseline on all these joints just to keep any corrosion down. So when you put them back together, first of all, wire brush the top of the terminal off. And then secondly, a bit of Vaseline there. And wire brush the bolt off, but then wire, um, Vaseline on that and then Vaseline there and there on the link and then of course put her back together that way it will come undone again yeah, it's like preparation for the next time you want to undo it stopping any corrosion And look, that tight, not mega tight, just that tight, that's enough. You don't want to pull the threads out of that brass, you don't want to stress the joint at all, you don't want to stress the connection at all, but it does want to be tight enough to keep the air and any possible acid fumes out. Hence, the Vaseline, that really helps. And we're on handheld camera here. So let's just see if we can get this. I doubt if we can. I can't really see whether we're getting any. Anyway, this is down into the cap. I don't know whether we're seeing the plates or anything but basically there's a dark brownie black plate and a grey plate the dark brownie plate when it's discharged will be have a 
a light grey dusting on it which is the sulphate they don't need to be they basically don't need to be bent twisted horrible nasty but if it's covered in sulphate a slow charge helps to remove that and of course these are forklift batteries so they're heavy duty unlike car batteries which will very easily destroy themselves these plates are quite robust I'll have a look in that other cell where I haven't topped it up so let's just remove the cap I've pre-prepared this but these do pop out and there's little tags there so if you get something like a, a broad bladed screwdriver very gently ease it out because there are some little pins there and they break off very easily so let's have a look down that hole hopefully you can see that those thin grey lines are the separators so you don't need to worry about that I really can't tell whether you can see very much here but the electrolyte should be just above that dark plate to start with and as you charge it up it might come up to an inch or maybe a bit more above the the plates so definitely don't add too much to start with or it'll come flooding out and you lose acid strength but also it creates corrosion everywhere so initially when I opened one of the, the caps you could see no electrolyte all you could see was the plates I, that's normal for a cell that's fairly discharged but the good thing was that I didn't have to put very much in like I don't know a hundred mils or something uh, before the electrolyte level came to just at the top of the plates don't go filling it right up because as you charge the batteries up the electrolyte expands because the SO4 part of the sulfuric acid moves from the plates into the water making the water electrolyte mixture bigger so I just top them up just to the top of the plate I've already selected the ones out that have got reasonable voltage now let's just zoom in um, and I've charged these a bit so hopefully we can see the there yeah. that has been charging for about 14 hours at about 15 amps something like that and as you can see we're halfway up the white if the meniscus that's the level of the water was down there between the white and the green I'd be that'd be fully charged but this is pretty good that's not bad at all let's try a different one you've got to be careful with the drips off these they'll make holes in your jeans try this one now and hopefully you can see that it's just in the green now I've done a video about the strength of acid in these forklift batteries so and have a look at go and have a look at that because sometimes as you charge batteries up the level will come right down to the bottom of the green which means it's too strong the batteries will hold a lot of power but at the expense of longevity so in that case you need to take some of the electrolyte out and uh, replace it with distilled water hence weakening the acid but you only do that when the battery has been fully charged and then trickle charged for quite a reasonable time and you can just hear the inverter fan starting 
Let's try another one. And here's another one. And now we see it's halfway along the red, which means that it still wants a lot more charging. That battery may be a bit of a problem, but it might not. So we just need to keep trickle charging that at about 10 amps. And this is where a normal 12 volt battery charger, fairly heavy duty one, and a Variac help because you can adjust the voltage into your battery charger and in this case I'm charging these two cells separately just because I identified those two cells as being lower than the rest and rather than continually uh, overcharging the main pack I'm going to bring those two up to a reasonable level and then continue to charge the whole pack as one once these lower ones have uh, come back up now the other thing is you always keep the bottom of the or the pipe of the hydrometer in the electrolyte don't go lifting it and wafting it about a you'll get a bad read and B you'll spread little drops of acid everywhere. So here's the variable DC voltage charging equipment. As the mains power it comes along to this variac out of the variac to there which is the mains plug for this charger and this yellow here goes to the batteries now we're going to two two volt cells so four volts but of course we'll be charging so we'll want something like five and a half volts or something like that And as we change the variac, the current into the batteries goes up. Just like that. So I'm going to set it about 8 amps and I can leave those two charging for another 10 hours, something like that. And because it's daylight, we've got good sun, then the power for charging these batteries is coming off our grid connected solar panels so we've got solar charging these through this equipment it all helps <laughs> 